Hi guys and welcome to my channel Calm the Creativity. I hope you've been, been enjoying my weekly series so far of back to school both last week and this week and today I want to kick off with another DIY and this one is DIY exercise books. You will be seeing me do these like three different designs and um, it's really cheap and affordable. I just got my exercise books from Wilco again. A lot of the supplies in, the, in this series came from Wilco. Um, and they were really, really cheap. I think they were like 50p each or something ridiculous. So it's really cheap, really affordable and really doable. So yeah, make sure to subscribe if you like this video and let's right into it. So for the first design you will need access to a computer and a printer, awesome developed photos, an exercise book, scissors, a pencil and a glue stick. To get my photos the right size I measured the exercise book first to see how many I wanted on each row. Then I resized the images using Pixlr and a centimetre to conversion calculator as well as measuring out a circle using the same method. For any photos that weren't already square, I used PicMonkey to crop as their cropping tool is easier to achieve the exact number of pixels. I pasted all the images in the circle onto a Word document and printed them out. So next you want to cut the circle out to use as a template and then draw around the circle on all of your images and cut the circles out. I did a total of 10 photo circles but it's really up to you. You could also do a different shape like a hexagon to make a honeycomb like pattern. Then I arranged the photos on my book until I was happy with the layout before picking them up by one by one and gluing them and sticking them down. Glue sticks are ideal for this but you do want to make sure that you glue right up to the edges of the photo circles so that they can't be pulled off accidentally. I also used a ruler to thoroughly push the photos down and remove any air bubbles. And that's the first design complete. So for the second design, you will need a pencil, ruler, liquid frisket, watercolour paint and a paintbrush, a piece of scrap card with paper and your exercise book. The scrap piece of card is to put inside the cover of your book to protect it from any bleed through from the paints. And you want to start by drawing a faint horizontal line where you want your text and then sketch out your writing in the desired font. I am then taking my paintbrush and liquid frisket and painting it over the text. Liquid frisket dries clear and acts as a barrier so that the watercolour cannot be absorbed in that part of the paper. You could also potentially use PVA if you don't have liquid frisket, but I am not so sure if this would be as effective. And then you just need to wait for it to dry. The next step is to watercolour. Go crazy! I decided to layer mine, starting with greens and blues. and progressing to purples and then reds and pinks When you are happy with your design, I suggest putting some newspaper or paper over it and weighting it with books so that it dries flatter. The final step is to go in with a damp tissue and clean up the paint residue on your text so it stands out more. And that's the second design complete as well. So now the last design, and for this you will need your exercise book and ink pad, either a stamp if you like or a piece of lino to create your own, a lino tool if you're creating your own, a pencil and some scissors. 
The first step is to draw out your pattern. I went for a geometric stripe pattern and used a ruler to make sure my lines were straight. Then you can either just freehand this or use a metal ruler to guide your lino cutter so that the cut lines are straight as well. Then I cut the square diagonally in half to create a triangle. The next step is to ink up your new stamp. I trial tested this on a piece of newspaper so I could see if I liked the look of it and then went straight onto my book, re-inking the stamp up between stamps. I used the triangle stamp to create some squares and some lone triangles with variations on the way the lines were going. And there you go, final design complete. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. As another reminder, just make sure to subscribe if you like this video. I am regularly uploading content, so I will be uploading more back to school DIYs for the rest of this week until Friday and then I'm back to my normal schedule of around two uploads a week um, after that so make sure that you subscribe so that you know when I upload new content and yeah have a good day guys bye